Hi guys, today I thought I'd show you how to make a really good fabric that's nice and strong and it will make book covers for you, it'll make mobile phone covers, all sorts of things you can do with this. So I'll be back with you in a moment, I'm just going to set up to go. Right, so the first thing that we need to make one of these lovely fabrics is a selection of other fabrics um, to cut up and to rearrange. Now, these some of the pieces are bigger pieces, some are little scrappy bits that I've got left, but they're sort of yummy and scrummy because they glitter. So they're rather nice. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your scissors and you are going to cut yourself up a selection of them. So I've got all those yummy fabrics are all cut up here now and you can see that when you pop them over they're going to make a really yummy fabric. So in order to get those stable so we can sew on them I'm going to need a piece of pelmet violin and you will need to measure out a big enough piece of pelmet violin for you to do something with. So for instance if you are going to do a book cover make sure the pelmet violin goes round the book. You know if you're going to make a box you need to make sure that maybe it's squarer. But we're only going to make a fabric today and we'll decide what we're going to do with it once we've made the fabric. So there's my pelmet violin. You will need some 505 spray or similar adhesive and I'm just going to give this a quick spray. So I'm just going to go out of view a moment while I spray it. Right, there you go. I've sprayed that with a film of glue across the top of it. And then you're just going to start putting your pieces down at random angles making sure you get a good selection of colour across there and you're going to fill the whole of that piece up with these scrummy yummy colours. Now the 505 spray, the adhesive, is just holding them in place so that they, I can actually sort of do all the arranging. Um, let's have some other colours here. Alright, there we go. So don't worry about how it works. Just get the surface covered. I want a bit more of my shiny stuff there. I like that one. And this pale pink is rather nice as well. I think I've got two pieces. No, I haven't. What else have I got here? There's another bit of my jizzly, my lovely fabric there. That can go on. Um, and spread your colours around. Doesn't matter if they've got raw edges, it's not going to be a problem. So, and I say do it randomly, but I know what you're all like because you're like me as well. You try and sit there and place them where you think you want them to go. Well, don't. Just pick them up and pop them down and try not to worry at all. Oops, just a bit more of that. That can go in. That bit can go on that corner there. And you can see you can very quickly build up quite a nice collection of colours. It don't have to be plain fabrics, you can use patchwork fabrics, scraps of, you can use um, organza fabrics, um, anything that you've got really to make a new fabric, which is basically what we're doing. Um, let's pop a bit of that, that should do there. Right, I think that's enough, so I'll remove those out of the way. Now, next, we want to sew this, but you've got some loose edges here, and as we sew, they're likely to catch under the sewing machine. So what we do is we take a piece of net, and we put the net down over the top. Now, I've got a black net here. Uh, you could use a red, you could use a blue, any colour you like that sort of works with what you're doing. And then just to help me, I'm just going to pin lightly on the corners. These pins will come out once I've um, tacked some stitches through it. I don't mean hand tack, that's too painful. I mean we'll do some running stitches um, on the sewing machine because that's much quicker. Okay, and that last one going in over there. 
So now what we need to do, that net will stop us from catching any of the loose edges underneath. And what we need to do now is we need to set up the sewing machine. And you need to pick threads that are going on in your colour collection. So the type of thread colours that I'm going to be looking at choosing, I'm going to be looking at choosing a colour that picks up this, a thread that picks up this colour. This lovely sort of um, purple. Um, we've got sort of pale pink in here. Now, I'm going to set the sewing machine up and I'm going to come back to you, but the first thread that I'm going to go away and choose and put on my sewing machine ready for when I come back is I'm going to pick up a pale colour because I don't want to get too dark too quickly. I want to start so that my stitches are in the background and then I want to bring all my bright colours forward so that they become more and more powerful. So that in the end what we end up with is we end up with something like this and I don't know whether you can see that closely enough but it's got all sorts of stitches on there. We've got some satin stitch, we've got some zigzag stitch, we've got straight stitches. That one's actually quite plain actually if I think about it because you can get really, really quite adventurous. And you can see on this one, I've got this lovely stitch that's a program stitch on my sewing machine. So you can do this with all machines. You don't have to have a program stitch that does all these fancy stitches. But if you do, this is a really good time for using it. And then once I've stitched that all down, I've used all the colours in there that I can and I've it can't move, I'm then going to zigzag on some ribbons and some lovely gold threads just to give it another surface to it. So pop back in a minute, I'm just going to set the sewing machine up. Right, so I've selected my threads here and I've decided to go with the lovely pink that picks up here. I've got this colour here which is similar to what's going on in these pieces. I've introduced these other colours because I felt it needed a little bit of lifting. So I've gone for a sort of blue rather than a purple and then this lovely sort of lilac -y blue colour here. And also on my machine I've actually popped on a, a sort of colour that picks up this one. So I'm now ready to stitch. So I'll put those to one side a moment because I'm going to be changing backwards and forwards between those colours as we sew. Now, um, I'm going to go under the sewing machine and I'm going to start with a straight stitch. Nothing complicated. I'm going to just work my way with a straight stitch. I'll slow down as I go over the pin and then I'm going to pick up some speed and I'm just going to feed the piece of fabric through and if I get a wiggle on it it doesn't matter stop with your needle down the other side swing round and come back I don't want, I've left sort of quite large gaps in between because I want to put other stitches in there swing round again and I'm just getting this this neck sort of put down so that I can take the pins out so bear with me while I stitch up and down and get this into but you see the stitching is not showing too much it's there but it's in the background we don't want it to be too noticeable at the moment because we're really just tacking everything down so that it can't move It looks quick at the moment and a lot of people think, oh, I'm going to really whiz this out quickly. But this whole piece of fabric that we're making, it really relies on how much stitching you put onto it and how much effort you put into creating your new fabric. Uh, quite often when I do this in class, the uh, students go, oh, well, I finished. And I go, oh, no, you haven't. You've only been at that about 15 minutes. There's a good, to make a really nice piece of fabric, that is usable, but it's a good hour's worth of sewing in this at this sort of speed. Slow down as I go over that pin. Right, once I've done that, I can actually get rid of all of my pins now, which makes it a lot easier because you can whiz up and down even faster then. Let's just pop them back so that I don't lose them on the floor. Right. Now I'm going to put it back under the machine and I'm going to come down the other way and now I can just I can just switch off and I can let the machine feed the piece of fabric through. And I'm not keeping a 
straight line, I've got a wobble and a wiggle going on. It's not a problem. Now if you were thinking that you could cut it up now and make something with it, you couldn't because all these areas have not got enough sewing in them. There's not enough stitching to hold all the layers together. So in a minute, when I've just finished going up and down this piece in the opposite direction, we're going to swap to a different thread and begin to put on some of our decorative machine patterns. So now that I've done the straight stitch, I'm going to add some zigzag stitch just to start giving a little bit of difference to it. going at different angles across the work so that I begin to fill up those gaps in between. You're heading for all the bits that haven't got any stitching on them. And don't worry about what it looks like, just keep going. Because it won't do anything for rather a long while until you've got enough stitching on it. Right, so now I've um, swapped to a darker cerise thread and I'm actually um, putting some of the decorative stitches onto the piece of work. And you need to take your time when you're doing decorative stitches. It's, don't just put your foot down because then that's when it snaps halfway through a pattern. And I'm just letting it go where it wants to go, um, just slightly moving the piece of fabric to allow for it to stitch. And what you're going to do is you're going to spend the next half an hour trying all sorts of different stitches on your sewing machine and covering the surface of this, this piece of work so that we begin to give it texture and, you know, other colours coming in um, and just basically having fun with it. And I promise you, you'll get the most amazing piece of fabric at the end of it. This sort of technique has been around for a long while. We've all used it in colleges and for teaching and things like that. But every single piece of fabric that you produce like this is unique to the person that is producing it. So just spend time. It's nice and relaxing actually to sit here and just let the machine do the work. And now I've swapped to the dark blue and my favourite pattern on my sewing machine is this lovely sort of little eyelet stitch that I use ever such a lot when I'm making decorative fabrics. I just love it. And again, just let it go, stitch it where it wants to go. And make sure you put, obviously when you use these stitches, make sure you don't just stick to one end of the the fabric you're trying to create like I am you need to put it across the whole piece of work so that it kind of gets a uniformity with the stitching as well oh, look, doesn't that look good look really nice doesn't it right so now I'm going to add some ribbons on top and I've done that by I've still got the same navy blue thread on but I put the machine back to a zigzag stitch and I've got my ribbons and I've picked ribbons that are sort of going to match what's going on inside and I'm just going to zigzag stitch over the top of the ribbons I've got a fairly open zigzag you don't want it too closed otherwise it will obliterate the color of the ribbon that you're trying to do when you get to the end there or the edge just swing it round pull your ribbon in a different direction put your foot back down and off we go again and you can bend it round as well if you want to and if it runs out in the middle of your fabric don't panic just take the zigzag to the edge and then once you get to the edge you can pick another piece of ribbon I've got a nice purple piece now so again pop that under 
your foot and off we go again we can have some nice purple ribbon I don't want to stop so I'm just going to bend that round and bring it back through the work again and it really doesn't matter where you stitch this is all so random and so free and every single fabric that you make is going to be so different I've got enough to just finish that piece of ribbon there so I'm going to bring that down this way whoops let's get it in line there we go it's quite nice that one the ribbon and again I'm not going to make it to the other side so I'm going to just stitch right off the edge of the ribbon and take my zigzag stitch to the outer edge of the piece of work so you keep sewing and sewing and sewing with all your decorative stitches or any of the basic type of utility stitches you've got you add your ribbons you can add cords you can add sort of bits of wool if you want to and then finally once you've stitched and stitched and stitched that's the sort of result you get and what I've done there is I've just um, neatened all the edges and I've then sat and stitched around the edge to make an actual panel um, of work right, guys so I hope you enjoyed doing that I hope to see some of your fabrics what you do with them how you make them what you turn them into do let me know and um, post me some pictures I'm always interested um, please remember to like, share, subscribe and I will see you very soon with the next thing that we're going to learn about. <laughs>